Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today, we're going to be working with another chest harness that keeps the arms and hands trapped in the front. It is the Fisherman's Harness. It is a delightful time. Well, it's called the Fisherman's Harness because it keeps you trapped up front like a fish caught in a net, I, I think. <laughs> I really actually don't know. Correct, Marie, you can go on the couch and watch TV again. Hey, whatever you're doing, as long as you're staying out of trouble. Speaking of staying out of trouble, remember safe, sane, and consensual, everyone. Safety, be sure to have some safety shears with you at all times. You can always get a new rope. Can't get a new life. And consensual, me, Marie, and Crochet Roy are all consenting adults. Communication is key. Now, before we take a deep dive into the fisherman's harness, we must first thank my sponsors. Me, and my gaming YouTube. Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Gameworks, where we play some games and see if they work. Today, we're back at Horizon Forbidden West. Pheasant and Evil Inscription, The Man of Madame. Ha 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 ha, Aloy. Master Hunter of Machine. Ah, there's more. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. Stupid thing! You won't live long! <laughs> You know... So for the fisherman's harness, we're going to be utilizing two ropes. Uh, we're going to start off by doing a double column tie. We're going to do a Somerville bowline. If you need help learning how to do that, I have the helpy video right over here. So we're going to take the bite of our rope. We're going to wrap around once, but not just once. We're going to wrap it around twice. And if you're feeling fruity, you can wrap around three times if you really want some security there. Now once over, we're going to make sure it's got some tightness to it. Good. Definitely feels that way. I'm going to cross over the bite. I'm going to then wrap around the bite. I'm going to go underneath the wrist restraints there. And then my thumb right here created a loop when we wrapped around the bite. I'm just going to put that through the loop and then we tighten that down. Wonderful. And just like the uh, X's in the front, we're going to bring the arms up. Now once we have this up into the position, we're going to be putting this rope over the top right here and moving around to what's going on in the back. Now once over, we're going to follow the curve of the rope and where it wants to go. It wants to go this way, so we're going to make it go that way. And we're going to wrap around the front. We're going to add a little bit of tightness, not too much because we're going to be doing some tightness when we come around towards the back again. All right, so we're going to go over the top of that. And then we're going to go over ourselves. Now it is at this point in time that we can add a bit of tightness. How does that feel? Perfect. Good. And we're going to go back around and follow this towards the front, making sure that we wrap around nice and good. I think we're going to be making maybe three to four layers of this right here as we progress along. Now, uh, to make uh, your rope model not as dizzy, you can have them stay in one place. But if you want to make them bit dizzy, then that's, hey, that's up to you. <laughs> so we have this uh, part of leverage right here. This part is being depressed and this part is being uplifted. So we're going to go on this uplifted part right here. We're going to do the exact same thing that we just did. We're going to go over it and through. And it's coming around top here. We can pull it down this way, add a bit of tightness and go back around. Wonderful. You're the best helper. We'll do the same thing. Add a bit of tightness. Pull down. And once more around. Actually, because I have maybe about two feet of rope left, I could maybe get around. Let me check real quick. Yeah, I think we'll be okay because we're going to be ending the rope right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a nice little overhand knot right there while I get my other rope. Now once I have that, I'm going to take the other rope, reach inside of it, grab the other rope to create the girth hitch, 
If you need information on how to do that, I did a, a, a quick guide right here. Good. We have the amount we want in there. So we're gonna come back up this in way, and we're gonna make a design that is similar to this right here in order to keep up with some symmetry. However, it can't match it exactly based off of the way they, uh, we did the counter tension initially. So we're gonna start by going over and then under this one right here. What goes over must go under, so saith the Rory. Now once we've gone under this one, we're gonna cross over itself towards the middle and then through again. It's not the exact replica, but it'll do in a pinch. Same thing. We'll start by going underneath it. Cross over towards the middle. And underneath again. Underneath. Crossing over and underneath again. Singing when there's an accomplished singer in the room. <laughs> Good. Now we're going to wrap over the shoulder and towards the front. Now once we've come over the shoulder, we're going to do a series of munter hitches going down here. So we're going to go over, cross towards the middle. We're going to pull up just a little bit and then cross over ourselves going underneath again. Same thing, another munter hitch. We're going to cross over and underneath. We're going to pull up just a little bit. Then we're going to cross over ourselves towards the outside and then underneath again. This is adding a lot of the structural integrity for the tie. It's the nuts and bolts of a reinforced door. After two times, I'm hoping you guys have gathered how to do a crossover hitch or a munter hitch. If you haven't, there's a video right here on how to do it. Now once we've put over our, our put in our munter hitches, we're then going to wrap around the elbow right here, getting nice and good around it, and then we're going to go towards the back a little bit in order to get to this spot right here. And we're going to go over. We could do another series of munter hitches, but that doesn't seem necessary. So we're just going to go over, underneath, and then over again. Over and underneath. I'm going to stop singing now. <laughs> no, don't. Get some tightness into it. And continue on. And you'll notice on this one that we go towards the inside and go this way. It's essentially a munter hitch. And what we're going to do is once we get to this area, we're going to go back over the shoulder and do the exact same thing that this side did right here. So we're basically just going to cross over and then we are going to go beneath this one right here. And when we pull up, you can see that immediately creates that counter tension right here. So we can just pull up right there and go down towards the front. So when we come over this side, same with this, but uh, we're going to do the opposite on this side. So we're going to go down towards the middle. So cross over and around towards the middle, pull it up to add a little bit of tightness cross over ourselves, and then come towards the outside. Symmetry makes the whole world happy. Now, if you're going to be doing a scene, you have to decide whether or not you're going to be uh, with someone ridiculous like me, who will be singing while tying someone up, or if you want something, you know, nice and romantic and intimate. <laughs> Which is not what we're doing. <laughs> I prefer you. <laughs> Keep placing our munter hitches, keeping them tight. Now once we've done this last one, same thing. We're going to go around the elbow, tighten that up, and pull towards the back here. Now for the back, we're just going to reach underneath here, pull through. Then we're going to cross over and underneath ourselves, just like that. We're going to pull that top and then we're going to crescent moon this way, cross over ourselves, making sure that we keep this loop open right here. Because once we go around, we're going to go through that loop and pull the tension up towards the middle. If we want to, for extra security, we can put an overhand knot right there. 
Now, for the most part, that is us done in this situation. Now, I do have about three feet of homework rope, but that's the fun thing with homework rope, is you could do whatever you want with it. Use your imagination. Do you want to go towards the front again? Hold down the hands? We got him in the praying position, but what if we, like, held him down forward? It's really up to you. Make something beautiful, just like you. Well, hey! I hope you enjoyed learning from that tutorial as we did a teaching it to you. Yes, they may be violent video games, but she's not being violent to other people, and that's really all I could hope for. She's actually being quite nice, which is still relatively unnerving. Anyway, I'd be remiss if I did not bring up my other lovely sponsors today, the wonderful people over at Knothead Nylon for the Rope and Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Roar's Brainworks, just like this YouTube channel. They are my rope and video game vanguard, my colonizers of dreams. And without them, all the ropey and video game endeavors that I do would be way harder to accomplish. Thank you for spending your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what you thought of the fisherman's harness and what you would like me to do in the future. As always, I'm Rory. This is our brain. I'm fairly certain it works. Be safe and go create some art.